I'm David and Brian Logan, all of us at BYU TV Sports. I'm Dave McCann. We will see you Saturday night on Countdown to Kickoff and again next week here on AFR. The Cougars are 1-0 to start the college football season, and we are talking about it here tonight in Studio C with the head coach of the Cougars, new offensive line coach Ryan Pugh, and running back Squally Canada as BYU football with Kalani Satake starts now. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake, presented by Intermountain Healthcare. And now, your host, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good evening once again, Cougar Nation. Welcome inside Studio C for our week two edition of BYU Football with Kalani Satake coming off the Cougars season opening 28-23 win at Arizona on Saturday night. Great to have you with us and we'd love to have you join our conversation tonight by submitting questions for tonight's guests on Twitter using hashtag Satake Show as well as via Facebook and Instagram on the BYU TV sports accounts. Q&A coming up later in the show to kick things off. Let's bring out the guy who showed off a pretty decent vertical leap on the sidelines <laughs> as the seconds ticked off the clock Saturday in Tucson. He is your head coach of the Cougars, Kalani Satake. <laughs> came from practice just came from practice they look good yeah so here I am yeah you're, you're minutes away off the field aren't you yeah I mean, we just yeah ended not long ago so no time for makeup and uh, <laughs> I still got the whistle on as proof <laughs> took the sun hat off I didn't think this was appropriate for the big hat to, and the glasses so yeah here I am thank you for being here by the way great crowd good to have you all here and good to have you with us off the practice field uh, every win is a good win for a coach but uh, some wins just feel uh, better than others and, um, and what you guys did at Arizona wasn't just the culmination of a good week of you know game week it was months wasn't it of, of, of making that happen uh, Saturday yeah a lot of hard work and, and uh, you know the um, the players they deserve all of it. they worked extremely hard for this and uh, you know they, they, they asked for uh, the from they demanded and asked more from our coaches and our coaches actually worked really well with them in the off season in, in spring summer and in fall camp, and I was just really happy to see all of it come together. I mean, could have made the game a lot easier by ending it earlier, and uh, we'll work on that, you know. <laughs> but uh, just just happy that the guys had the, uh, they, you know, they just had the the resiliency to just keep keep going. I mean, we were down 10-7, and uh, there was just no no fear, no uh, no doubt on the sidelines. So it was a lot of fun. Halftime was a lot of fun too. So uh, we felt like we've been in that position, you know, before. And, uh, we're really looking forward to getting out there and, and, and uh, having a good second half. And the third quarter was awesome. So if we can have more quarters like that, I think we'll be fine. Now you told us uh, on the radio coming off the field at halftime that we're going to be a good second half team. And then you showed it. We're going to see highlights here in a second mm. about how it all went down. In fact, let's maybe just get uh, right to it. To BYU and Arizona Saturday night. And uh, this was a game in which Arizona takes the opening kickoff. And they go 14 plays. Longest drive of the night. 14 plays. But it ends with this. Kalani, no points. Yeah, I think Corbin said he got his hand on it, so there's a little, maybe Shelton and Corbin got his hand on that one, but um, this was a great screen to Leva Hifo on third and long. And, third and uh, ten, yep. yeah. Had, had some good blocking downfield, and uh, by our receivers of Shumway and, and Akile there, you see. And this is another look at that play. It comes on a third and ten. It's a 30-yard gainer setting you up for first and goal. Yeah, the only thing he could have done better was get in the end zone, but that was a good <laughs> good setup for Squally. But that's you why you've got this guy, right. <laughs> exactly. I guess they wanted to give Squally all the, you know, a lot of touchdowns, and uh, once we get in that position, the guys get hungry up front for the blocks. And um, you know, we had uh, you see here, see here Corbin spying quarterback, and probably took a little long to get there, but gave up some some big plays. Probably gave him too much time to to make the throw, and 
Um, that's how they got their first score. Fortunate enough that we were able to force a field goal there. Um, so better, better red zone defense. Um, in this situation, quarterback kept the ball, was going to run the other way, reverse field. We've seen him do this to a lot of different people. Um, Sione missed the tackle on that and then caught us with the bubbling go here. Um, needed the safety over the top and reacted too quickly to the bubble. Um, here on this play, let's see, this is the flat route to our freshman. I don't know if this is the Moroni with the it's jump. Moroni, yeah, the leap. Um, yeah, that was nice. Need to see better ball security on the leap. Ball's just dangling <laughs> out there. So, uh, but just really happy Moroni, healthy, ready to play, you know. And this is another third down, and this is why we brought Dylan here. You know, he's he he never quits on plays, and so it's uh <clears throat> it's good to have a guy that that uh this is this defines who Dylan Colley is. He just um, he just doesn't quit on on the ball. He had every right to complain about. It possible PI guy getting there early and they set up the next play. We set this up with a lot of our jet sweep stuff and um, had the defense sync up on the on the jet sweep and there you see Marone, I knew he... He was already celebrating. Yeah, yeah. And Matt balls in the, the air. It's good for Matt to do that at home. And This is the play to the flat for the true freshman. Wish he would have got in the end zone. Um, similar thing happened to me in my true freshman year, you know. <laughs> got tackled on the one yard line, he took a step out and then Squally another setup for the touchdown. So now you've scored 14 in the quarter and uh, the defense goes back to work. Yeah, great job by Corbin here. He can run. I mean, he's big and you can see him spying right there. He's just a, uh, he's a skyscraper in the way. And Forces Kyrus. Quarterback. Yeah, mm. Kyrus could have had a pick there. That would have been nice. <laughs> but uh, for a big guy, he can really run. This is a really good pressure by the, by the punt block team there and then uh, Shelton being able to get the ball and make a move on his own. He had some good blocking down the way, but this is really all him just setting it all up. And if he can just get rid of that punter right there to make the tackle, we could have had a nice play. But uh, Mike Shelton had a really great game in, in special teams and at, at corner. So really happy what I saw from him. And you see bodies down there blocking and smart, you know, guys playing smart football. So really pleased with our special teams unit and uh, happy with what we saw from from Mike Shutton as a returner. 45 yards and punt returns on the night. 37 coming there and no punt return yards allowed by BYU. And then a really nice play here on a boot from Tanner and Micah Simon has his only catch of the night. It's a big one. Yeah, and uh, you know, Tanner spread the ball around and this was on fourth and one and everyone thinks we were gonna, should go for a field goal there, but I just I trust the guys up front that close to the end zone and it was nice to get this uh, not only the first down, but to get a touchdown out of it. So Those were hard yards driving yeah, past the point. Yeah, a field goal would have made the score 24, and they would have tied it up and would have gone to overtime. So, <laughs> um, so it was 28-10 heading into the fourth, and Arizona uh, makes you work for the win. They get a touchdown from Khalil Tate, and uh, Tate made a couple plays in the fourth quarter that, uh, again, kept this interesting, but uh, as we're going to see in a bit, BYU made more hard yards to finish it out. Nice pop by Austin Lee, ultimately, it's Taylor over the top, but this play on the two-point conversion attempt is pretty something. How, how do you see this one? Yeah, I think this is Earl Mariner makes the play here um, on a little shovel screen. Comes from the side. That's him right there. Flips him around. Over. Yeah, and then just snags him back. And uh, I mean, this is why you don't give up on plays either. You know, this is then you see Butch coming from the backside and kept the ball out of the end zone. So really pleased with that. So our offense can do this and. Just get first down. Yep. I mean, You'd already had... converted a, a third and two with five, and that's mm -hmm. a third and seven with nine, and that's how you end the game yeah, with the I ball in your hand. Three, three minutes and some time there, and yeah, just chest bumping for some fun <laughs> with my boy, with my my boy Fessy, my brother. So <laughs> it was fun. The Is pictures that caught us, and in, 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 it caught us after we. So I actually got more air than than Fessy did. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and I was way up, so the picture caught us on the way down. So. Maybe next time they can take a picture at the top we, we, of my We jump. may get a closer look of that, just to prove your point. <laughs> These are our stats presented by <laughs> Nissan Intelligent Mobility. Now the most exciting tech you own is in your driveway. And a lot of things to like about this night. Uh, the, the possession time, you see the final margin there. But in the second half, uh, Kalani, second half alone, 22 and a half to 7 and a half. Uh, BYU with the football. Yeah, and that's that was nice. You know, just having the uh, our offense just control the ball and... and um, we, we do we can score more points when our offense has the ball and, and can possess it for a long time and uh, I think that's why we do the style of offense that we have and get us set up and it allows the defense to make some adjustments. Um, defensively I wish we would have finished stronger. There's times that <coughs> Khalil Tay is a good athlete but he, he threw some balls that there were for grabs we should have came down with some of them and so hopefully we can get that done this week when the, when the ball goes up instead of we had some nice tips and, and uh, PVUs but it'd be nice to you know break the ball up but nice to come down with them and get some turnovers out of that'll um, you know it just cause a little bit of uh, hesitancy for the quarterback to throw the deep ones and uh, maybe allow us to get some sacks.
So no takeaways, but no giveaways either. Now, you've coached uh, 27 games here at BYU. This was the second game of the 27 where you had no sacks allowed and didn't give the ball away. So if, you, if you're keeping your quarterback upright and, and you're not giving the other team extra possessions, you would be in pretty good shape. The other game was Michigan State, by the way, in 2016 where that happened. And so Just offensive keep line, going, yeah. keep doing that. Yeah, so no sacks allowed, which is great. Three of the five starters on O-line were, were, were taking their first snaps for BYU. So I thought overall the cohesion up front in that O-line was excellent. Yeah, as a young group, you know, um, I think, yeah, you look at, like, James Empey is a freshman, Brady Christensen a freshman, uh, Tristan Hodge is, is a sophomore, Schof is a junior, and then um, Austin Hoyt's the only senior on the front. We have a lot of guys behind them that we feel comfortable with, so it's a good group, and I, I love their coaches. The coaches are working really hard, and uh, we're having a lot of fun. We'll, we'll do better when, when they have success. Well, you asked for it. Uh... We want to prove your excitement level and, 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 your, <laughs> vertical, and your vertical leap level. So the second, seconds are waning. Uh, Kalani's pretty happy. And uh, there, there are some guys to chest bump there. There's one. Fessy's coming up here in a bit. And I think we might, we might end up still shotting you here with Fessy just to prove your point. So oh, that's, uh, that's a warm-up. That was a warm-up. There we go. Yeah. Now, that, that, that's when you really get up. That's when you really get up. There we go. So look at that. Well, yeah, so. Yeah, see, that's after. That's after the hit. So my, my muscle mass caused the shirt to rise up on Fessy <laughs> and expose his, his stomach. And so we'll be doing abs now just to make sure that doesn't happen again if it does happen. No, but um, so yeah, that's definitely on the way down. So I mean, probably a, what, 17 inch vert? Max, max leap there, I think. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll take it. That's good I mean, stuff. Yeah, my calves have to support a lot of weight. I might as well <laughs> jump once in a while. <laughs> Those are special moments, though, and, uh, and you guys deserve the celebration. Yeah, it was fun, you know. Um, that was great. It just, uh, just nice to see all, all the hard work that our players and our staff put into this game. And, and like you said, from January on, you know, we just—it was a good, uh, it's a good feeling of accomplishment. And it was fun on the way home, but we're, we've been back to work now. You know, and we we talked about staying humble and staying hungry, and um, just being being at home is going to be fun, but that that's not good enough. Just to just to be pleased with being home and thinking that that's going to be a huge advantage for us. We definitely love our fans and love The Rock and everybody that will help us make some noise in, in Lavelle Edwards Stadium, but um, the preparation is the most important thing. We, we can win the game from Monday to Friday. Okay, segment one is in the books. Fans, for your day-to-day -day Cougar sports play-by-play, -play, watch BYU Sports Nation with Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. Weekdays at noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. When we come back, the Cougs, yes, indeed, turn the page and bring in the Bears of Cal. BYU football with Kalani Sitake. BYU Food To Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food To Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. On the season finale of The Story Trek, I'm back in the gem state. I can't even explain how hard this year and a half has been. Three years ago, I met a remarkable woman battling a potentially fatal disease. I lose my hands for a minute. And because Ashley had the courage to share her story. Perfect. Good job. Plus, a potato points me to longtime friends who refuse to act their age. As long as you're able to move and keep moving, then life will treat you well. Watch The Story Trek tonight at 8 Mountain on BYU TV. I think people should care about this show because it's unlike any other show that's on TV. Because our fans have really responded to this show, it shows that people want to be inspired on how to do good and they want to see good things happening for other people. They're cheering their neighbors and their friends on. And I think it gives them a sense of empowerment of, hey, I can do that. And so it's inspiring and we should be looking for the good in the world. That's what makes a show like this so important. Don't miss Random Acts tonight at Seven Mountain. 
BYU Football with Kalani Sitake is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, healing for life, and by Nissan, innovation that excites. We are back on BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. Now that BYU is 1-0 for a fifth straight season, the Cougars are back home and hosting a game at Lavelle Edwards Stadium for the first time this year. And this Saturday, it's the Cal Golden Bears in town. Cal, like BYU, want to know. After capturing their season opener on Saturday, this one went 24-17 uh, in the Bears' favor as they defeated uh, North Carolina out there in Berkeley. Yeah, good team. And, uh, you know, from the film, they do a lot of different things on offense. So they'll spread it out and, and uh, run the ball. But they'll spread out throw the ball and, and do the spread game with the RPOs, but then they'll also run. Defensively, they have a lot of long athletic bodies that can run. You can see there, um, they have really big linebackers and defensive line just such tall guys at uh, big frames. And so, and they do a lot of different things up front. They, they move quite a bit. And I know their coaches, they're really good coaches, and they'll get these guys ready to play. And so it'll be a, be a lot of fun, but it's, it's definitely going to be a challenge for us. And we're you know, we're going to have to work really hard uh, this week to, to prepare for this game. So just like BYU, Cal won a fifth straight season opener. And like BYU, big time of possession edge in their game. And uh, the four turnovers were big. Uh, four, they were all picks, including a pick six. And so mm. the offense was just okay, I thought, for Cal. But uh, the defense was exceptional. And that's kind of why they won the game. Yeah, and their, their head coach is a defensive guy. You know, with Wilcox running it. I mean, he's been a lot of different places. And so... Um, I think they're going to be active. You know, they have, they have uh, Tim DeRuiter as their, as their defense coordinator. So they, they know defense and they know how to get their guys ready to play. And they're smart. It's a tough institution to get into academically. So uh, very similar to what we have, you know. So we'll see how it matches up and looking forward to the challenge. Coach Wilcox said after the game that he intended to use the three quarterbacks you talked about. And all three did play. Uh, the junior starters, Ross Bowers, uh, the, soft, the freshman backup, redshirt freshman is uh, Chase Garbers. Then the kind of the wild card is, is the sophomore Brandon McIlwain, and all three of them have maybe different uh, strengths, and they got, they all got used in different ways. And uh, he's not named a starter yet for this week. He said they're going to let it play out until game time. Yeah, so we'll be ready for all three. We know them as number three, five, and seven. So that's uh, <laughs> we'll see uh, who, who shows up on the first snap. But I think our guys from watching the film are, are um, they understand. I mean, their uh, their offensive coordinator is Bo Baldwin. He, he used to be the head coach at Eastern Washington and is very smart, understands football, and he, he's not just a spread guy, he's done a lot of different things. They'll, they'll pack it in and, and get a big, you know, with two tight ends, and, and uh, they have a fullback that I, I, I'm a big fan of. He's a big he's guy. huge guy, 99. Yeah. And yeah. he has a cool number, you know. Yeah. It'd only be nicer if he had 34 as a fullback <laughs> number, but um, he, he actually, I like the way he plays, and their tight ends are physical up front, so. It'll be a lot of fun. This is going to be a, a cool, cool matchup for our, our defense. You mentioned Coach Baldwin, and Ed Lamb has association with him, of course, when he was at Southern Utah, mm -hmm. and Baldwin was at Eastern Washington, right? Yeah, and just really good coaches, and and have done great things in in in, in the past, you know, and, and they're continued. Obviously, you see what they've done against North Carolina, so it's going to be a lot of fun. They'll be well coached, and uh, they'll be ready to go when when they get here to Provo. Uh, what stuck out uh, of, of the four INTs? Uh, was it more Carolina not making great throws? Those guys being in position to make good plays. How'd you kind of see that one? Well, the one, the pick six was a great play by the DN. Uh, he just jumped up on the, the outside back and just, just snagged the ball. This one, I think, is a safety comes and you know it's a little overthrown, but it's great coverage and uh, they, they get good pressure on the quarterback and it allows a lot, makes the quarterback have to hurry his throw a little bit. This is the great athletic yeah. play and takes it in for a touchdown. So. Um, you know, they just bring a lot of different sets and they bring, uh, they rush four a lot of different ways. You don't know where the fourth rusher is coming from. It could be any of the four linebackers. And then they'll have, they also do a lot of fire zones and they'll mix coverages in there. So um, a lot of things that Wilcox did, has done in the past where, when he was at SC and other places. Fourth uh, regular season meeting between BYU and Cal. The Cougs have won each of the preceding three in the regular season. Two of them were in Berkeley. Uh, you've been on staffs and coached against the Bears a lot in recent years but maybe not a lot of cons consistency or continuity because a lot of things have changed over the last, say, 10 years or so there. Yeah, and I, I served my mission there, you know. So, um, I mean, I was on Cal Berkeley campus for seven months of my mission. So Oakland mission, um, right? Yeah, I know Telegraph and, and all the wonderful spots there, but they're coming to Provo. But, I mean, I, there's a, a, a familiar with the school and familiar with, with uh, the players and the coaches. And so, um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, I, I remember playing against them, too, when I was a, when I was a player. So... Uh, it's just nice to have a, a Pac-12 school come into town and, 
and uh, so they can see what we got, especially I'm, I'm excited to show off our fans. You know, it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, we hope fans, by the way, end up uh, picking up those tickets and getting into the building on, on Saturday night. Uh, home opening night should be special, and uh, we hope that fans go and get those tickets before a Saturday night. Uh, Squally Canada will be our next guest in the next segment, and uh, he's someone who had a great night for you on opening night Saturday in Tucson. I was with Coach Grimes yesterday a little bit, and he, was, he seemed like he was really proud uh, of Squally in particular for how he played in, in getting you that win Saturday at Arizona. Yeah, and he's just done so many little things that... Um has helped this team, you know, so this game means a lot to him. He's from the Bay Area, so he'll be excited to go against Cal, and, and um, I'm just really pleased with what he's done as a, as a leader and what he's done for the younger guys, bringing them along. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to see what he does in game two. Wanted to get him over the 100-yard the mark, but, um, you know, there's always something to, to aim for. You can't complain when you got three touchdowns. He ended up with 98 yards on Saturday. Where has he come from, from, say, end of last season, to where he was able to be uh, a leader for you on, on Saturday night? Well, he, he was banged up a little bit and had some injuries here and there, but he, you, know, you saw what he's capable of doing when, in the UNLV game last year, you know, so um, I think if he, just, if he stays healthy and if he uh, runs within our system, uh, he'll have big games. And then uh, I think that we're close to, I mean, <coughs> all the yards were, were hard-earned yards that he got. And, um, he's close to breaking some of those, so it'll be interesting to see what happens on Saturday if we can get those big, big play, uh, big gains on, in, in the run game. I think his long gain was maybe nine yards for the night, which shows if you can get to 98 with your long of nine, yeah. you're getting the hard yards all night long. Yeah, and then it just, I mean, after contact, he was gaining a lot of yards when he's getting hit, you know, and he's dragging people, and the O line was pushing, and I mean, he, the first ball I think it was a, a, a dump pass to him the flat and then he he, may, he he can run he can he's explosive he runs low to the ground and so um he's usually falling fo falling forward that that usually helps with your yards also not sure how much pub he got uh saturday night but lopini katoa was a great two to the one two punch that you had at running back on saturday yeah good compliment to him he's a, a different type of back you know but um I, I think the guys that probably don't get enough credit are the tight ends and the fullbacks that block for him brandon backer did a great job blocking and and uh and he, he loves playing the game. I just love seeing him out there. But not a lot of people appreciate the fullbacks other than the other fullbacks <laughs> that watch. So all the fullbacks out there know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, I love seeing Al Bakri out in the flat with the ball in his hands. I know that Arizona's safeties and DBs didn't like seeing that. And no, toward the end of the game, you could see a guy turning his shoulder away from yeah. Brayton. Well, he's a load. I mean, that's just, that's just pain coming down, down the road, you know. So um, there's, only, there's not very many ways to hide from that. And, uh, he does that on, on, I mean, he's on our, he's on our special teams unit. He's on punt, kickoff, and he just loves playing football, and I love seeing him out there. And apparently he likes to hang out with the O-line, like he thinks he's one of them. Yeah, well, if he keeps eating the way he is, he'll get there soon. <laughs> <laughs> I know his pain. <laughs> Speaking of the O-line, uh, before the break, uh, Coach Grimes said he played all five guys all night long, basically. Mm -hmm. and, and, and as you hit it earlier, three of them were taking their first snaps for BYU. Uh, about that, the fact that you got a, a starting five that was kind of your first play to last play group, and they kept it going all night long. Yeah, and, and they're strong. I mean, they, they, they got, you know, that last play, they, were, they just wanted that first down in the worst way. And um, when we went for it on that fourth down in the goal line, they just, that they were so excited that, we, that I decided, to, let's go for it. And um, it just better not have been a pass play in that on that time, you know. So <laughs> they're, they're just, they love playing the game. I think um, guys like, like Tristan that had to sit out for doing you know, redshirted from transferring from from uh, Notre Dame, uh, he was he was ready. Brady, Brady Christensen and and, and um, James Empey were redshirting last year, and so uh, they've been hungry. They haven't played football in three years, and so this was a good moment for them. They had a lot of, a lot of fun. Thomas Schoff was playing tackle last year and he had a little bit undersized, and now he's walking around really heavy and, and enjoying life being a, a big boy. Okay, you're turning the page to Cal. We know that. Most memorable moment from uh, the Arizona game for you as you look back on it? Just being with the guys. I mean, just you know, the entire night, just seeing the uh, belief. And um, we have a lot of guys that, that, that contributed, but there's also a bunch of guys that were waiting for their opportunity. Some never even saw the field, but they're just they're positive and, re and really excited about possibly getting an opportunity to get in the game. And those guys were tuned in and, and, and supporting their teammates. And I love seeing that. It was, a, it was a fun a fun night. We spread the ball around, so it wasn't like a bunch of uh, stats in, in the passing game. We had 10 different receivers yeah. getting the ball. And so 
Um, everybody got a piece of the victory, but uh, more than anything, there was a team victory. We had guys that worked hard on our scout team um, and preparing our, 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 our travel squad and our, you know, our offense and defense and special teams. And so this was a whole team effort. I just love being around those guys and love seeing the hard work. And we challenged them to work harder this week, you know, um, in our team meeting on Monday and saying that it's going to be harder to go 2-0 and, and if they're willing to make that commitment to, to work hard. And <coughs> we read um, Lavelle's um, um, his, his quote that, the will to prepare is more important than the will to win, you know. So um, we're going to prepare really hard, and I was really pleased with yesterday's work and with today, and so it's a good start right now. Okay, you're back in Lavelle's house Saturday night. If anyone's on the fence out there about whether to get into the building on Saturday night, get those tickets and get down there, what would you say to those fans? Let's go. Come watch us. You know, it's better in person. Plus, I'm thinner in person than I am on the camera. <laughs> so, yeah, come see us. And it's not that late. You know, you still have plenty of time to get home and go to church. <laughs> we should note, by the way, uh, first game with the clear bag policy. So a lot of folks might be taken by surprise on this one. Don't be. Uh, clear bags only are allowed. And, uh, and so make sure you're aware of that before you head to the stadium Saturday night. New yeah. policy coming in this year. It's kind of the NFL policy, I think, and they want to make sure people are aware of that. So it's a clear bag policy. Details online for sure, but to make sure that you get your clear bags and get into the building Saturday night. Yeah, and you can see what everybody's carrying in their bag. So. <laughs> All right, as we head to break, we want you to know that you can enjoy a full hot breakfast buffet, dinner Monday through Wednesday, and a kitchen along with a large grassy backyard all along the Provo River Trail at the residence in Marriott in Provo. This is BYU football's Kalani Satake, Swally Canada coming up next segment here in Studio C. I volunteer at Primary Children's Hospital because I care about helping families with sick kids. I volunteer at the 512 Foundation because I care about our kids and community. And I volunteer because I care about Utah's future engineers. Do you know someone who cares about making our community better? I Am Flash will recognize your unsung hero and donate $1,000 to their favorite local charity. Iamflash.com slash hero. I care about making the world a happier place. September 17th, watch the BYU Women's Soccer Match live in HD on our digital platform. Join the game using the BYU TV app or by going to BYUtv.org. See you there. Bruh, I got no chill. The BYU TV Sports Countdown to Kickoff. BYU versus California. 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain. Saturday on BYU TV. Defending in Spot a lot, we have some fabulous people. First off, Stacy's best friend from high school, who also plays the tuba and the flute. Gildar? Yeah, definitely. And up next, we have Tori's secret admirer bird crush. Kookaburra! Yes! And also a smile that could crush a navy. Nitrous. <laughs> and we have a little something something that we found between Tori's toes. Pink or. Yes! <laughs> Splat a lot. Mondays at 630 Mountain, followed by Studio C on BYU TV. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Satake, presented by Intermountain Healthcare. Squally Canada is coming up in just a few minutes. Coach Kalani Satake, once you guys got back together as a team to start Cal Week, uh, what was the vibe and what were some of the things you wanted your guys to know to help put Saturday in the rear view and get ready for the Bears this weekend? Well, we talked about it right after the game, you know, to just, um, uh, there's just the concept of humility, you know, and, and um, to just keep working, and then uh, the, the, I wanted them to be happy and proud of what they accomplished, but that was more important that we get right back to work and uh, know that this is, I said it before, before we, just, we didn't just do all this just for one game, and so uh, we needed to get our focus on the next game and, and focus on trying to get 2-0. I, I don't think a lot of guys were surprised. I'm, I think they were just excited that the season started and that we um, started with a, on, a, on a good note, you know, but. Uh, it was important for us to, you know, compliment them, but then tell them, just remind them that we got to move on. All right. Our next guest had quite the Saturday night down in Arizona. Let's take a look. 
Straight handoff, Squally, and wide open off tackle right into the end zone. Oh, Canada! Squally, Squally, almost untouched, takes it again right and right into the end zone. Waiting for the signal, touchdown! All right, there were eight running backs in the FBS who uh, rushed for three or more touchdowns this past weekend, and one of them was doing it for BYU down in Tucson. Coming off his first ever three touchdown day, please welcome into Studio C, Squally Canada. All right, good to have you. How was practice? It was fun. You just got wrapped up with it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We were doing a little extra work after practice. That's what took me so long. Uh, a good uh, extra work because you guys were just wanted to work. Uh, no, like no, like punishment extra work, right? Just uh, oh no, working pass protection can never be too good at that. Agreed. Yeah, the squally just leads the way. I mean, our guys do more extra work um, than what's required for them, you know, and that's uh, because of the demand that our, our players have on each other. You know, squally will take a good group of young men that need work and even the guys that are, are red shirting he'll work with them and uh, they work on their craft and that's that's nice not having the coaches being able to preach it we don't have to preach it they just they just already act on it and squally leads the way all right squally gets up <laughs> tell us where you came from uh, i come from Opitas, california it's which is where uh it's north of san jose Back so home. relative Bay Area, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so with Cal coming in, this is a, a, a program that uh, means something to you, I guess. Uh, uh. In terms of growing <laughs> up around there. I mean, you know about them. Yeah, I, I know about Cal growing up. I had a couple friends go there. Uh, back when I was in eighth grade, a close friend of mine, his older brother went to Cal, played linebacker. His name was uh, Stephen Fanula. He was a big name back home, but yeah, he went to Cal. I've seen Cal play once in my career. Okay, you know that Kalani served a mission in Oak Town, right? Yes, sir. You talked about that? Yeah, he talks about it. <laughs> I mean, uh, Oakland is a lot different from where I, I hear where you. I'm from. Uh, my my area is a little bit, well, not a little bit, it's way nicer, but. <laughs> <laughs> you did not start off at the Bay Area School. You went to Washington State to start your college career. Tell yes. us how you ended up in uh, Pullman and what brought you to Provo. Um, well, my recruiting path was, was challenging. Um, nobody in my family went to college or played any D1 sports before, so, uh, my mom and dad were like, you know, jump on the first team that had that offers you. And that was actually Boise State. So I was committed to Boise State. But then I let a friend of mine get in my ear and tell me to take my visits to Pac-12. So I took my visits, ended up going to Oregon State, Washington State. And then when I did that, I lost my scholarship. So when I went to Washington State, I really liked it. I had a friend from actually from Oakland that was um, committed to Washington State as well. So that's how I ended up Washington State. Me and him uh, talked about it, decided that we'll do a college career there. And then once I got there, um, things didn't go as planned. I didn't fit the, off the offensive scheme, so I thought I should get out of here as quick as possible <laughs> so I could have a successful college career. And then during that time, um, I had a friend named Kahari who was once committed here, and he uh, led me to the school. And Jeff Martin was at Boise State. He was a recruiter here, and he, you know, I talked to him, worked with him, and we got things, got the ball rolling, cut my dreads, and... Because <laughs> <laughs> that was a big part of your persona, right? Yeah, I mean, at the time, my mom had dreads, my dad had dreads, my older sister had dreads, and I was the youngest dreadhead, so. <laughs> <laughs> what made BYU right for you? Um, well, the morals of the school. Growing up, um, I come from a church background. I'm, my dad had me go to church every Sunday, and one thing, he told, one thing that he told me that he liked about this program in the, in the town was that they fit our um, religion, our, our morals of life. Uh, and that standard and when I was at Washington State I wasn't you know living the right life and BYU came along and he was saying this would get me back on the right track and make me grow closer to God and, and help me grow as a man and that's exactly what BYU did and, and helped me grow up as a man and grow stronger in my faith. Great to know. Thanks for that. Uh, Arizona season opener. Yes, it's a great night. Let's take a look at it shall we? All right this is uh, Squally on Saturday in Tucson. Is this the first play? I think it's first play of the game isn't it? Yes sir. Yep. Okay. First down, chain mover on the very first play of the game, and you were off and running. 
and then the first of three touchdown. Nice when you can walk in without taking a lot of hits. Oh on yeah, the way in. it's lovely. <laughs> O-line does their job. Braden does his job, as you can see here. He goes in, cleans that guy out. What can you say about the line in front of you on uh, on Saturday night, helping you get some of these numbers? Um, they're awesome guys, man. They are. They're. They're just fun to be around. Just thinking about today in practice, how much fun we're having, going against the defense. But yeah, they they want to block for me, and I and I want to run behind those guys. And they they're excited to come out and play and get the job done, man. It's, it's a fun group of guys up front. More with Squally's coming right up, folks. Wednesdays at 8 o'clock Eastern on BYU Radio. Get better acquainted with Cougars past and present on Behind the Mic with an hour of in-depth conversations. Wednesday at 8 Eastern on BYU Radio. More with Squally Canada straight ahead. When we come back, we'll go to our live audience and social media. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. Man, this car is amazing. Look at that touchscreen. How about that confidence? Look how she handles those groceries. Positively effortless. The teenager is borrowing the car. This could get rough, but no, that's a reliable car and a win for mom. So you mentioned you want to finance with Deseret First Credit Union? Definitely. Mom's dream car is as close as Deseret First Credit Union. That's right. Get pre-approved online today or talk to your dealer. Your dreams at Deseret First Credit Union. That's right. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been seriously injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies and protect your legal rights. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Okay, everyone, gather around. After four years of hard work, we are so excited to finally release this to the world. It's a secret. It's important, but I think I can trust you. It will either be super fun or the worst thing ever. Is it real? It's hard to say. It's 50-50. It's, it's definitely not the middle. You're in love with someone else? Yes. Yes. No! Girl, you know it! Please, no! No? Are you okay? How dare you ask that? I think it's safe to assume that James is dead. This is getting weirdly personal. The rest of the cast of Studio CL. Very impressive. Surprisingly impressive. Excellent. Really? Really. 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 It's insane. Absolutely brilliant. This is why I love you. Mm -hmm. And I love you. Oh, is that how you say it? Yes. Oh, that feels good to say. <laughs> what? What? What is that? What in the blooming beast of burden was that? <laughs> I did it. Don't miss Studio C, Mondays at 7 Mountain on BYU TV. Fans, you can use hashtag Setake Show on Twitter and comment on the BYU TV Sports Facebook and Instagram pages for a chance to see your questions asked during our Q&A sessions each week. Speaking of which, we've got a question in our studio audience for Squally Canada and young Lincoln Bourget is at the mic. Hello, Lincoln. Hello. Um, who do you think is the best player on the team? <laughs> Uh, I love all those guys, man. Um, my favorite would have to be Butch Pau. He's my locker mate in, on defense. <laughs> and then uh, for offense, there's too many of them, but uh, I'm going to go with Matt Bushman because he's also my locker mate. So both of us <laughs> sit right next to each other. So I'm going to go with my locker mates. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Lincoln. Appreciate it. From uh, social media, at Tyson Peterson on Twitter for Squally. For Squally, he says, I'd like to know what things helped you the most in the de development of your run game. Oh, a lot went into that. Film study, for sure. Um, just looking at from when I first got here um, and then going back and saying, seeing what I could do to improve and then having coaches come in like Stewart and Nas and Harvey and Jamal, all these guys in my ear giving me so much great advice. It's hard not to progress when you got great guys around you that played at the next level and know what they're talking about. So just really my mentors, those 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 people had like a lot to do with my improvement. And I just took what they took what they told me and, and applied it during practice and did a lot of extra work in the off season. Have you set personal goals for this year? Or are they more team goals for you? Um, there's there's I have both um, team goals. We have those, and I have my personal goals, which I keep to myself. But the team goes, man, just win every game we can. Just right. win every game. 
that's, that's, that's the goal right there. Okay, feel free to stick around with us here as we get into the next segment with Coach Pugh at Squally Canada. Fans looking for an even more convenient way to shop at Smith's? Try Smith's Click List. Order online, pick up curbside at the store. Visit smithsfoodanddrug.com for details. After the break, former National Championship Center and BYU's new offensive line coach Ryan Pugh joining us. Plus your questions for the Cougars head coach later in this hour. This is BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. Are you looking for a better way to deliver results this year? Expanding your product line or building new locations? How about your online presence? Does it need a boost? Maybe you just want to put a little more distance between you and the competition. Tap into the powerful engine of BYU Athletics and let us put together a plan unique to your business. We can provide you with the tools designed to enhance your brand on a local, regional, or national level. We invite your team to join ours. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Hi, sweetie. Check this out. Chicken wings. I love you. Have a car wreck? Martin's Collision Repair. The right repair, the right paint, the right choice. Martin's Collision Repair. Some say if you're looking for the soul of America, you'll find it right here in Memphis, Tennessee. But if Memphis is the soul of America, then what's the soul of Memphis? From the banks of the Mississippi to the neon lights of Beale Street, that soul's hiding somewhere, and I've got to put it all in one painting. Join me as we paint the town of Memphis, Tennessee. Don't miss Painting the Town tonight at 830 Mountain on BYU TV. On Monday, September 17th, watch the BYU Women's Soccer Match live in HD on our digital platform. Join the game using the BYU TV app or by going to BYUtv.org. See you there. Bruh, I ain't got no chill. The BYU TV Sports Post Game. BYU versus California. Saturday, after the game. On BYU TV. BYU Football with Kalani Sitake is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, healing for life. One of the new features of the Sitake Show this year is the introduction of a Sitake staffer to our audience and to Cougar Nation. And tonight, that special guest is an Alabama native and starting center on the national championship team at Auburn back in 2010. Please welcome BYU's new offensive line coach, Ryan Pugh. All right, good to see you. No shower. We've had to establish. <laughs> Straight off the We've field. had to establish that everybody is literally coming right off the practice yeah. field into the studio. Isn't that right? I think Squally smells the worst, though. <laughs> <laughs> How'd it go today? It's good practice, good energy. Uh, guys were focused on being 1 0 this week. And so just looking forward to continuing to get better uh, tomorrow and the rest of the week, finishing strong on Saturday. What's a good practice day for you? How can you tell it while you're in it or when you're done it? Energy, focus. Um, these guys were in tune today. I thought today was a, a great practice. Uh, they took the game plan from the meeting room to the practice field. And, and to be able to do that at this level, it's, it's crucial to our success on Saturday because we put a lot on our guys. Uh, and they responded in a great uh, way today with their effort and their energy at practice and focus on just the little details. You've got your call sheet or whatever you got right tuck, still tucked in your belt here. <laughs> <laughs> he said, literally. Off the field. Yeah, just off it. <laughs> you never know where a football career is going to take you, uh, but your background is, is, is in the Deep South. Could you have ever seen ending up in Provo, Utah? And for folks who are maybe not too familiar, when you see this on the screen, what uh, comes to mind? Man, that was a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> that was a good win. Um, I've lost a lot of weight, and, uh, but there's a lot of good memories. Uh, it helped me help shape the person I am today and the, the inspiration and the hope to have a positive impact on the young men I coach because the coaches that I played for in college, uh, Jeff Grimes, obviously, and now working with him, but uh, the impact he had on me, my father was a coach, seeing the hundreds and thousands of people that 
he was interacting with every day uh, and hoping to shape their lives is what I hope to do for these young men. Uh, along the way, being able to use football as that avenue uh, to teach life's lessons, and I think it's the greatest team sport in the world, and you can develop young men in a positive way through the game of football, and uh, that's what we're trying to do. You've accomplished a lot already at a young age as a player and a coach. How much of that is important to share with your guys, and how much do you not you know, do a lot of when I was a player or this is what I did uh, in, in, in inter interaction with them? What's the balance there, maybe? I, I, I think there's a healthy balance that has to be there because at the same time, uh, being their coach, you have to walk the fine line of they know that I played college football, but I think that you gain instant respect when you walk in the room in front of young men and you stand before them and you, you garner the command of the room by the way you speak, the things you've done. and. Uh, before that, your, reputa your reputation precedes yourself, and I think that's there, but I don't ever like to talk about it because that's not why I'm here at this point. That's allowed me to get to this platform, but if I don't use it in the right way uh, for these young men, then, it's, uh, then I'm wasting it. And so I, I, I allow them to joke around at times, and I steal some of Coach Grimes' film and use it, and they all like to point out that that's me on the tape. And little <laughs> do they know there was like four number 50s that played in a row right there at Auburn, so I just tell them it was a different one. So <laughs> good plays, it's me. Bad plays, it's someone else. Uh, you're a new dad, relatively new dad. I am. You and your wife, Kathy Lee, uh, had a baby in the spring. Was it right during spring ball? Spring ball, had, uh, had to miss my first practice ever, um, but it was worth every second of it. I uh, made it to practice four hours after she was born, so, and she was there at practice, I think, two days later. So um, that was fun. Our, our house, we don't miss practice. My wife comes to practice as much as possible. Ella, uh, I think I grew up in a football coach's office and on the football field, and um, people joke with us as coaches that our kids are a lot like remember the Titans, the little girl that's in the stands and they get they're passionate about it, but they they love their they love their fathers, all the kids. Coach Take allows a family atmosphere and it's I, I told my wife I got home the other day and I said, We have more kids on staff than we have on scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty accurate, isn't it? I mean it's it's a big yeah, family. It's close. Here. It's close. But we've we've had I mean I love seeing these men as fathers and, and and role models and mentors to our players. And so I've been really pleased with Coach Pugh as a person. Um, and the coaching part just isn't, is an added bonus. Let's turn uh, Coach Pugh over to Cougar Nation for a bit. I think we've got a question here in our live audience. We've got, uh, we've got Reed Bates. How you doing, Reed? Hi. Coach Pugh, how has the culture at BYU surprised you from what you thought it would be when you were hired? That's a great question. Jeff uh, kind of alluded to what I would be experiencing while I was here. He, uh, the whole time I had worked for him and played for him, uh, he kept talking about how special of a place BYU was and Provo and the people. And he just kept talking about the people and the, the young men that he got to coach. And so uh, coming here, I had a good idea of what it would be like, but never had the experience that I've had here with these young men and then the people in and around the program. Uh, at BYU, from the administration to uh, the people who work in our office, uh, to the people of the city of Provo, and it's been a it's been a great experience for our our family, uh, and I, I think it's just it's been overwhelming because it's been such a positive experience. You just got here, of course. Would, would you like to stay a while? I'd love to. I'd love to. Love to help him and the guys. Stay for a while. From social media, I think we know this guy, at Jerem Jordan asks, has Jeff Grimes thrown a marker at you yet this season? He asked if I threw one on Saturday. He, uh, same reason I had one thrown at me was the same reason I almost threw one on Saturday. This guy's got to quit looking at the Jumbotron while we're on the sideline. <laughs> That's the defense. We can't play defense, we play offense. But uh, no, our guys were locked in on the sideline. Squally, they had the whole crew over there. They, they were telling us what was going on, and, and we were able to make some adjustments on Saturday, and that was positive to see our young men come off the field. Uh, even though it didn't start as fast as we wanted to, it was just they never, they never changed. They, they kept pounding away. They kept zeroing in on the details, asking the questions, understanding the changes we were making, and, and just asking for more. And then when we, we came out at halftime, we knew there was something special about to happen in the third quarter. And our, our guys never stopped believing in themselves. Um, and this guy right here ran the ball very hard. And if we have that performance each week, we, uh, we have a bright 
future ahead of us this season. It was a special night, hopefully a lot more of them to come. Coach Ryan Pugh, Squally, thanks for coming around. Stick with us here through the break. Appreciate you taking some time. Absolutely. All right, thanks a lot, guys. All right, Mondays at 1 Eastern, we talk with the BYU football coordinators on the coordinator's corner with Jeff Grimes, Eliza Tuiaki, and Ed Lamb. Mondays, 1 Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. After the break, the head coach of the Cougars answering your questions as BYU football with Kalani Satake continues. Call it a path. Or a way through. It can be arrow straight or have twists and turns. It's life's financial journey, and Mountain America Credit Union is here to guide you every step of the way. With timely advice and affordable products, this is your journey. Let's begin together. We're Mountain America, guiding you forward. This September, see the good in the world with exciting shows on BYU TV. Eric Dowdle captures the essence of each town he visits in Painting the Town, Tuesdays at 8.30 Mountain. Join a young adventurous team as they travel to the isolated coast of Chile to research penguins and dolphins in Sirius Ocean, Thursdays at 6 and 6.30 Mountain. Get a load of volleyball action with your favorite, the BYU women's volleyball team, all month long. There's something for everyone here on BYU TV. I think people should care about this show because it's unlike any other show that's on TV. Because our fans have really responded to this show, it shows that people want to be inspired on how to do good and they want to see good things happening for other people. They're cheering their neighbors and their friends on. And I think it gives them a sense of empowerment of, hey, I can do that. And so it's inspiring and we should be looking for the good in the world. That's what makes a show like this so important. Don't miss Random Acts tonight at Seven Mountain. On the season finale of The Story Trek, I'm back in the gem state. I can't even explain how hard this year and a half has been. Three years ago, I met a remarkable woman battling a potentially fatal disease. I lose my hands for a minute. And because Ashley had the courage to share her story. Perfect. Good job. Plus, a potato points me to longtime friends who refuse to act their age. As long as you're able to move and keep moving, then life will treat you well. Watch The Story Trek tonight at 8 Mountain on BYU TV. Corbin Kapusi, uh, senior defensive end. Favorite movie, Braveheart. Favorite non-BYU sports team, uh, Running Weasels, flag football team. Bucket list place to go, Tonga. Favorite music group or artist, John Bellion. Favorite food, King Crab. Would you rather sing or dance? Absolutely dance. Beach of Mountains Beach. Favorite TV show, The Office. Favorite non-football hobby, uh, fishing. Favorite athlete, um, myself. <laughs> Biggest fear, heights, favorite superhero, the Hulk, Michael and LeBron, LeBron, favorite coach, my dad. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Satake, presented by Intermountain Healthcare. That was Corbin Kafusi on our play clock. And uh, I think it was uh, Coach Lamb that was telling me that uh, uh, Corbin was uh, standing in the way of Khalil Tate a lot on Saturday night, just giving him a big old smile. That's Corbin. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, he's a monster. He's tall. So he, when, uh, you know, Ed and E talked about using him as a spy, it's not your typical spy. They're usually smaller and faster. and Tough to hide Corbin. Yeah, yeah. and so I, I think it was a different, it's a unique um, spy, but uh, he was just in the way. He was just, it was just the, uh, it's like if you're trying to uh, shoot a layup over a seven-footer, you know, as a quarterback, it's hard to throw over, and uh, he just got in the way, and I think that's, that probably had probably more impact that way than <coughs> actually the sacks and the uh, the sack and the, the the TFLs that he had. But he's a he's a disruptive player and he's active and he's really athletic for how big he is. And the great personalities we saw in yeah, the uh, play awesome. clock. All right, uh, Adam Karen from Issaquah, Washington, has a question <coughs> for Coach Sataka here in studio. Hey, Coach, what is the role of statistics and analytics in coaching versus the role of your own gut feeling and intuition? Um, we use both, right? I, I think. Uh, you have to use stats and analytics to, to know your opponents, but you have to remember that they have, they have the same stats available to them. And so we do a lot of um, self-scout to see what our tendencies are ourselves, and, and then you try to break some tendencies, but at the same time, you kinda, that's how you, use, you scout your uh, opponent. So we, it's not, nothing's ever 100%, but you, I think it's important to kind of know what, they're, what they like to do. We, we, we go back even to years of, of what uh, a coach likes to do as an offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator. And 
kind of have a good feeling from, I think, what they have. And then what, you look at the talent that they have on their team, I think you can really narrow down some things. So, yeah, without giving away the game plan, we look into it heavily. Okay, thanks for the question. From uh, social media, at NM Trippy on Twitter, the team is traveling to a lot of great venues this season after Lavelle Edwards Stadium, obviously. What is your next favorite stadium for playing a game? You know, I like the NFL stadiums. That's, those are my um, the, the neutral sites. Those are awesome. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, I think it'd be fun to play. Uh, we played the University of Phoenix Stadium against Arizona a, a few years ago, and uh, we, I know we played at the FedEx Field in, in, um, in D.C., so... I like playing those because you see you see those on Sundays, and I think our players it's just like it just has this different aura to it. So, for myself personally, as a player, it was awesome to go to Notre Dame and play there in '94, and we beat them. So that, I think that was a cool uh, feeling. Um, that was just you know being able to see touchdown G Jesus and all that stuff. And my my wife went on a hike before the game and found touchdown cactus, took a picture of it and put it on social media. So. Yeah, I don't, what's, you see, you have to find a bear that does a touchdown sign this, <laughs> this weekend. But no, it was a lot of fun. Just, um, yeah, just, uh, I, I like being in different places. And whether on the road or at home, we have fans everywhere. And, and they were representing it in Arizona and Tucson. And just want to tell them thank you for being there because our players just feed off of that. And it's nice to do that everywhere. Great stuff. Okay, back to wrap things up here on BYU Football with Kalani Kitake. On the basic level, we offer transportation. We carry four wheels, tailgates, and a place to rest your rump. Beyond that, we provide adventures, opportunities, and jobs well done. So perhaps our favorite offering is our full line of trucks, including the new Nissan Titan. Right off I-15, Tim Daly Nissan Southtown and the popular full-size Nissan Titan. Think Nissan. Think Tim Daly. Okay, where were we? <laughs> no! Who's laughing now? A vow of friendship. A ruthless matron. That was me say. And a self-willed girl with plans of her own. Don't miss the next episode of Heady Feather, Sunday at 6 Mountain on BYU TV. Some say if you're looking for the soul of America, you'll find it right here in Memphis, Tennessee. But if Memphis is the soul of America, then what's the soul of Memphis? From the banks of the Mississippi to the neon lights of Beale Street, that soul's hiding somewhere, and I've got to put it all in one painting. Join me as we paint the town of Memphis, Tennessee. Don't miss Painting the Town tonight at 830 Mountain on BYU TV. All right, here is your BYU and Cal game day schedule. BYU radio coverage begins with Cougar pregame live at 8.15 Eastern time. Countdown to kickoff is live at 9 Eastern on BYU TV. The game is on ESPN2 and BYU radio with full postgame coverage, of course, on BYU TV and BYU radio. Welcome back to BYU football with Kalani Sitake. Brought to you in part by Smith's. Low prices, market fresh at Smith's. And it is BYU and Cal in the home opener for your Cougars. And uh, whether it's game day or game night, being in that stadium has always been special for you, and I hope it is on Saturday night. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, looking forward to seeing all the fans there. And I said our players love you, so come out and support them, and they'll play harder. I promise you. And the, the, the guys like Squally, they feed off of that, and he's a. He, we didn't get to talk about him a lot, but he comes from a great family, and, and uh, as you can tell from the story that he said, and just ready to have some fun and, and entertain the, the fans. All right, thanks, Kalani. Folks, we'll see you here next with us uh, next Tuesday at 8 o'clock Eastern, 6 Mountain, for the coach, for Squally and Coach Ryan Q. My name is Greg Rubel. Thank you for tuning in to BYU Football with Kalani Satake. We'll talk to you next week. Good night. Go Cougs. We're going to give Emmeline the opportunity to become a ballerina for a day. Hey, 
Hi, I'm Will with Random Acts, and you're watching BYU TV. See the good in the world.